to the old fella back if you knew where I'm Mr. P, wherever you want to call me up. So, <laughs> but I just I sat here today thinking, I'm chilling out, I've got all the things to do, I've done enough. And I thought, oh no, I forgot I did an interview with uh, Howard, back a broadcast channel. Um, and um, so I thought, oh, flipping it, yeah, better sort that out there. So anyway, it's, it's going to be about an hour and a half long. We're just chatting. Basically, we're just chatting about all sorts of bits and bobs. We're just chatting. I can't even remember what we're talking about, to be perfectly honest with you. But all will be revealed when when we, we start doing that. Anyway, oh, oh dear. I'm going to shut up. And um, anyway, there you go. Get on with the chat. Hello everyone, it's the old fella back, and with me today I have... It's me, I'm Howard. Uh, I put back a broadcast at the bottom of my like my, my Skype. It's not Skype, is it? That's like 10 years ago. It's Zoom, at the bottom of my Zoom. There, back a broadcast. That's, that's yes, I can see high. it. Yes, same <laughs> as it says here, old git. Sorry, I mean old Mr. B. <laughs> right, so, obviously you're into sort of... Also, living in Japan, which is obviously obviously great because you you get. To, I mean, I've, apparently I've got to come over to Japan. It is required. Yes. Loads of bands want to meet me. I don't know. You why. are famous, yes. yes. But um, not this National one. National treasure. Bean cushion. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but it's, <laughs> um, but yeah, and you you're into sort of all sorts of different bits and bobs and things, and you're involved in all sorts of uh, various and. You get to meet a lot of the bands. More recently, more recently, yeah. Um, I, I should, by the way, I'm going to put a little bit of context in uh, now that we're uh, doing this because for anyone who's watching this, um, I don't think you and I have ever really spoken before today. And mm -hmm. like literally, just before we press record, now we we spent like about the last two hours just having a chat, and I must say it's been thoroughly enjoyable. So we've been getting to know each other. And just at one point, we were like, you know, we should probably press record at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been really interesting because obviously you've been um, you've been talking to a lot of uh, Japanese bands. I know you've done a lot of interviews as well. Um, but yeah, my channel, um, it's been it's been great being here. And during COVID, obviously, there weren't so many gigs, which is a shame because just before COVID, I was starting to get into going to um, gigs with the, you know, with the channel rather than just for my own enjoyment. But then sort of post to all the COVID things, um, I've been doing a lot more of that. And I, I thought, well, I want to take this back to what I was doing before, working with, you know, small unsigned and small signed bands and that kind of thing. And yeah, so the channel recently, depending on when this goes out, we've just kind of really been making a swivel in the last couple of weeks where now we've been interviewing a lot of bands in person, been getting them to do exclusive live performances just for our channel, which is really something I'm so excited about. And yeah, we're going to be posting those, but it's just been such a pleasure meeting all these bands. There was something I was going to show you, but I've lost it. Where don't I get, don't, I've got them all to sign some stuff. Anyway, don't hi. don't get too excited. You have to go to the toilet again. <laughs> yeah, I've been to. I've been like, okay, I'm just going to show you. Like, I, I filled this up, like for this interview. It's not with no, not not with not with the bodily fluids. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's been converted into bodily fluids. But yeah, that that's um that's how long our little um pre-interview conversation was going. Along. <laughs> I'm on the last little sketches now, so there's not enough, hopefully, to make me pee anymore. But yeah, I did make a few pee visits. <laughs> is, that, is that a tin mug? No. This one? No, I think this is just your normal porcelain. This is this is tin. Ow, shit. You know why this is tin? Because I'm old and you drop things. Oh. <laughs> you can hear it clank. Like, oh, I dropped something. <laughs> yeah. where, did, where, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> well, somewhere in your beautiful, completely not green screened apartment by the beach. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is the funny thing is if I, if I, if I try to uh, throw it over. <laughs> Back of me. Actually, this was... image of, you get convinced yourself, you throw it over your shoulder and it just destroys the green screen. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. oh dear. Yeah, but, but no, it, it's it's um it's been something where I've 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 known about your channel for a while. And um it's been something where it's come up occasionally, like, oh you know, you, you missed 
the old Mr. B and effectively young Mr. B should have a conversation. But um, obviously, I know you've been uh, your your big channel, been doing quite a lot of things. So it's always been a case of um, kind of at what point we would eventually enter each other's orbits. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Glad well, to be that's that I said, I, I found you. And then I, 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 obviously I didn't flip in subscribe to your channel and put so obviously silly me so then i lost you then i was for and then i found that interview that you did with nam thought yes. got him right that's it right that's it that's it we got it because every every band i react to these days i do i do subscribe and i do it the notification bell so some days yeah. i'm looking like oh dear it's going to be rather busy we've got about 20 reactions to do um yeah, that is the most I've ever done in a day, by the way. One an hour and then four hours to sleep. No, only, only did eight today. Only today. Oh, well, so spiritually, like you're not even trying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, as you know, with YouTube, why should I? <laughs> oh, the deeper issues are coming out now. Yeah. yeah, Robin, <laughs> Robin, so and so. Yeah, it, was it invalid viewers? They call it now. Yeah, invalid uh, like, traffic. Uh, oh, invalid traffic. Okay, I just yeah. well, I wonder which one of your which one of your followers accounted as invalid by uh, YouTube. So, oh, well, if they think I'm going through all three thousand five hundred looking, they got another thing coming. Yeah, good. Yeah. Three thousand five hundred videos. That's really that's really cool. Actually, I'm I, again. I'm really. Uh, it's really impressive how much you've done uh, as well. So I think that's another reason why, because um, one of the things that's interesting is that you, um, and we mentioned this uh, before uh, we started recording, but you mentioned about the fact that uh, you you cover a lot of bands, not just not just the big bands, but the smaller bands as well, which is, of course, something that I'm focusing on, not solely, but a lot now, especially with doing these interviews and such like. And I think it really came across that the two of us, I think, have a similar approach to Although our channels are very different these days, we have a very similar approach to, you know, minimal editing. So it's real honest talk. And on top of that, having uh, like a genuinely sort of looking for the bands that you know you want to show to the world rather than just looking for the bands who are already big. Be, because yeah. there's a lot of bands who everyone covers. I know. But, um, well, I will I will be, you know, you'll obviously be putting some up there and hmm. and I will be reacting to them because I'm going to sneak over to your channel and beat them. <laughs> just i'll be on your channel one day like, it's still it's still because that's what <laughs> that's what that's what i want to do i want people to see these like undiscovered yeah. bands there's so many out there they're all they're all over the place and and this is what a this is what i do such and the thing is if it helps the band in, in any little way to get noticed then it's well, well worthwhile and what makes it worthwhile it for does, me is yeah. when when the band comes to me and says thank you yeah that means everything because they they've obviously noticed and i mean I, I, there's quite a few that do know me um and it's quite funny when um uh flu 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 before they changed the name i don't know if you know them oh um so they're now for the year, but Fleur Fleur. Yeah, I, I yeah, saw Fleur, them Fleur. live with Trident and then um yeah, yeah well yeah. they were doing a live stream. I went on the live stream and went, hello from the UK. And then it's talking, oh look, hello from the UK, hello. Look. Then we'll look at the goes, oh zombies, me, zombies, me. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I took that clip and I did something with it. <laughs> uh, and so I put a few of them things together. It's like uh Tamu, drummer. Out of Nemophila. Mm. She's doing a um she's on a live stream and I come on. I just went sort of like hello. And she goes, Ah, old Mr. B, famous old Mr. B. I thought, oh, oh, so I replied, No, I'm not famous, you are. <laughs> and and, and she goes, You're flexing, flexing your fame right now. I like so, that. <laughs> so she goes, Oh no, yeah, she says something else. So I nick them clips and put them together and put it up on my channel as a bit of fun. Um and there's That's there's all cool. sorts of little bits and bobs like that where I go on a channel and they they they, they go why do they go so naughty? It's only me, it's only the old so and so from the UK. Yeah, I mean I, I do think it comes back to that fact that in a way, um, as you say, a lot of these bands like that, I think as well, you know, Japan's Japan's got such a massive music industry, but unlike any of the other countries that have industries as big as this, 
you know, most of them, they circle around the sort of hits that you hear in a lot of countries. Like you know, the American hits, sometimes the British hits. Those are the ones that emanate in all of the, if you like the, I know this term is not really used anymore, but like the first world sort of country, you know, the big developed countries, they all kind of have the same music scene. Japan's the only one of those countries that has a really huge developed music scene, but as well as the foreign stuff, they've got their own domestic stuff. So it's interesting because they have all of that same mechanism you used to seeing in other big music industries, but they're kind of a lot of the time not so aware of how their industry sits amongst the others. So when they see interaction from people in English speaking countries, for them, it's really cool because they feel like they're crossing this bridge between I mean, even going to a Japanese uh, record shop and what do you see? Yes, they still have physical media. Uh, what do you see? You see like two sections. It'll always be j pops and J-Rock. And then you'll have what they call rock and pops, which is basically just music from the rest of the world. As two things that sit almost the same size area in every single uh, music and record shop. So for them, they feel like they know they belong in this category. But when they see someone from overseas, they feel they've made that connection. But also because you are old, Mr. B., they have more respect for age in this country. So, you know, when you get to a certain age, they see experience, they go, it, it means, I think, more to them as well. So, yeah, I, I can really understand why people would, um, well, well, Japanese yeah, musicians do, would I, appreciate your feedback. I do know that they are very polite and, and that, but, but when they're replied to, they, they all seem to lose the old bit. It's just Mr. V. <laughs> and, and, I, and I have been known to complain about that. And also, <laughs> also the other funny one is when they go, uh, they, they say they, they, they get it sort of it's sort of old Mr. B it's Mr. Old B I think that would be more in uh, someone's going to correct me if I'm wrong here I think that would just be a, a linguistic thing because if you put old Mr. B then old becomes like an adjective where you're just calling the person old like coldly whereas if you include it after the mister oh yeah no, in the same I way you included before so i think it's i think it's actually them trying to like find a way of putting it in the name and accept yeah. it's part of the name but also they don't want to just call you old well i am old <laughs> that's what i say i am yeah. old so, so you can say that you can yeah, say that but know, like, oh, that's oh. why it's printed that way so they can say it well like you say politeness here yeah, it's the politeness um and this is the thing with, with my channel being called backer broadcast which was not originally my intent we got named that by my friend bubbles i'm always going to hold that against him um the backer broadcast thing's always funny because people are kind of a little bit uh uh cautious of calling me that and i know when we um first started appearing in uh live streams for uh for i love me who's a band who i really really like but it's surprisingly small i'm always surprised how small they are uh, we started appearing in the, their live streams and I did a couple of comments and they were reading out the comments and they were kind of scared to say back a broadcast like D -d -d is that wrong and then they could say maybe it's bake broadcast and they thought it was bake broadcast like I'm baking bread and so it became like a similar thing I did a, a response video where I took that clip and it was a response video of me explaining in Japanese why the channel was called this but also like fake overacting why I was so upset that they thought I was a baker and then we just like rebranded the channel to bake broadcast for a little bit there. Um, but yeah, I, I finally met them for the, that was back in like 2019, 2020. I finally met them for the first time, um, like last week. And we did that interview and they did an exclusive live for it. And one of my first questions was, okay, so do you actually know what my channel's called now? <laughs> it was really cool about it. So it's, it's, um, it's really fun because a lot of the time they're being polite, but they're also very playful if you get them into an interview. Yes, so. but backer, I mean, can sound similar to something else. Especially, well, with a Lond especially with a London accent. Backer. Change it for an F. Backer. <laughs> backer podcast. <laughs> we were talking about whether we were going to put profanity in that in this video. Well, that, that's long gone now. Is you know, fuck a broadcast. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, I didn't see. I didn't actually say it, so that was the thing. <laughs> oh, he just led me into. Yes, that one, that's then. right. Yes, yeah. But um, but no, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, how people get the names and things like mine. The only reason mine's like that is because a guy where I was working always called me Mister B. So when I started, I just took old in front of it, found nobody else has got it. There you go, job done. 
You know, that's say Mr. B on its own would be like, you'd open yourself up to too many of the rest of the world's population claiming your name. You put old in front of it, and that slightly self-deprecating oh, yeah, they don't, gives you a little it. bit they of don't want to know then, do they? <laughs> <laughs> well, most people are not going to cut out. Well, well, I mean, I'm Mr. B as well, but I'm, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Would I call myself old Mr. B? I don't know, maybe. When that, that point will maybe come in the future. If, I to use me, that name. if I was to use my surname, it would be old Mr. A. Yeah. We we yeah. found a. I, I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to quote your name on the channel, but <laughs> we found you have <laughs> second. Me second. Well, you can you can you can, you can use me first name. Everybody, everybody seems to know it now. <laughs> a enough. lot of people send me emails, and uh, they use me, and and in the comment section they call me Brandon. So you know. It's, it's it's a known thing. It's it's just that uh, the old Mister B is the old Mister B. Yeah, it's the channel name, and that's that's what sticks. But uh, it, it suits you well. I've got to say, you are you are well known, and uh, as we've uh, as we've discussed, you know, the Japanese musicians you've spoken to, plenty of people uh, know of you. So um, I think now you've got that name. You've got that name for life now. That name's sticking right. with you. I've only got nine years left, so we're all right. Oh, what? <laughs> right. No, right. Because I'm 70, right? Mm. And and the average age in the UK is 79. So I just keep saying, well, I've only got nine years left. So but... I, I like that you've set, you, you've set your border at average. It's like, I am ne never going to exceed average. Why no. is average where you've gone? But, but no, but it's just my outlook on things, you see. And people go, oh, 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 yeah, you only got nine. Yeah. How do you know? I said, well, it's the average A, so, you know, anything after that's a bonus. Um, it's, it's just my outlook on, on things. It's just how I am. But uh, that's to me, that's how you should be. Yeah. So for every person who accidentally crosses the road without looking at the age of 50, they increase your chance of living to the age of 130. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, and, and then you get NHS sending you things to, for to self-tests if you not got this or that and everything else you see mm. plus again you free, read this you're still alive free, free prescriptions you know i don't um, get free internet though but uh <laughs> not like a trying i haven't been to the uk in like um it, it's it's weird now because I, I haven't been back to the uk in i think it's about eight years now so and so how long, how long have you actually been in japan then um I, I'll, I'll try and sort of reduce the complicated answer i usually give to this i mean since I since I came here, basically this time now I'm here since uh, well 2016. So yeah, it's like it's seven years. But when we go next year, it'll be eight years. Um, so yeah, seven years I've been here. Uh, but I had been here before, back in 2007 through 2008, and many many visits in between. So I, I kind of had like a, a, a fair knowledge of Japan before i moved here this time but now it's been a, a straight run of uh, over seven years um but i haven't been back to the uk once since and i was thinking the other day like um i've been i've been to a lot of countries around asia in those seven years you know had little holidays over to other countries and things but i don't think i've left asia in seven years either i've just no, kind of been not coming back here you're not miss much <laughs> well this is what i was thinking is because there's this weird thing where um, people ask you a lot of the time, what do you miss about the UK? And obviously I miss some of my friends, but like a lot of my friends have come out here and visited me anyway. I always feel bad. They come and visit me and I don't visit them. Um, so you get that. But other than that, the only thing that I could find that I missed from the UK was gravy. And then when I found out that you can just get gravy online, I was like, all right, because you, you don't have like the big ovens here where you can make your own gravy unless you've got a properly big house. So I can't make my own gravy. I'm, I miss my like my my bisto, my oxo, and then uh, yeah, someone just sent it out to me. It's like I'm good. I'm set for life. Want to make me some potatoes and gravy? Got it. That's it. Only <laughs> thing you miss is gravy. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and shoes that fit on my feet, but that's a whole different discussion. Oh yes, because I brought some shoes right when I was in Canada. And had to buy the next size up. There, there is not my size does not exist here. There's like this shop that opened in Ueno, um, I think last year, which specifically does big size shoes, and that's now the only place where I can buy shoes that fit on me. I think that was in response maybe to an increase in the number of overseas people living here. But 
Um, so my shoe size in Japan, it's done in centimeters. It's 29.5 centimeters. The biggest size you can buy in most shops, they some go up to 20, some go 28 and a half. But like 29, you can't get it in any standard shop. So, um, yeah. So what size that, that are you in English? I can't remember. Um, I, got, I, I, I was looking for like my tape I measure. It's a, not here. I think it's 12. It's not that big. 12? That big. That's huge. Is it? Maybe that's fl flipping hell. That's like flippers. I mean, I'm size <laughs> nine. Um, um, it's. It, I think it's definitely in the double digits. I think that was 12. Um, I, I, someone, someone, go online and check this. No, for hang me. on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to get me ruled. Just a minute. Do you know what I really love about this? So, so this, this is the point when we decided to start recording this conversation. That this is the point where Japanese music has gone out the window. Now we're going to talk about shoe sizes. So, you at home, guess right now, what size do you think old Mister B is going to come back with and say? He doesn't know because he can't find where he put his fucking tape measure. <laughs> Because I've been, I've been using it. I've been working on stuff, you see. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so my foot is nearly a foot, basically, is the um the the measure the measurement. So someone, well, okay. someone's going to come back. How, how tall are you? Um, oh, shit. See, I'm used to doing that. So basically, um, I nearest makes no odds about six foot. Okay. Um, so I think that's about 180 centimeters. So you'd be around about 182, size, I think. About size 10 feet, really. So yeah, I probably got like slightly clown feet. My feet are probably I'm, a little I'm, bit long I'm for my size. Five ten. Well, I was not have shrunk because I'm getting that old. Um, but um, but yeah, and I'm size nine. So you'd be about size 10. This image of you slowly shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, <laughs> trying to save money on the coffin, right? <laughs> that's already hey, that's already paid for. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a funeral plan sorted out. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! Well, yeah, okay, I... let's say let's say I croak it. Then somebody yeah. else has got to pay for it. Family, haven't they? So you know. Uh, I think they're just going to like chuck me, like roll me up in a carpet. Oh, no. And I bridge. told them I don't want anyone turning up. Save your money. You know, you just pick the ashes up and chuck them where you like. I'm not bothered. Was... Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me pile my guitars up and set fire to them. And they won't do that. I did ask. <laughs> it's just like a Viking funeral, just like lying on top of like a whole like pile of guitars. And then like, well, light I've, got, them I've, up got, and... I've got 13 of them, you know, so you can make a decent stack. Was 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 thirteen a deliberate number for edgy reasons, or was no, that just a coincidence? It was thirteen. No, no, because I I got rid of one, so it went down to twelve. Then I decided to get another one, and then went back up to thirteen again. So oh, okay, okay. So you no, no, you see, I know it's just people are about all well, thirteen. Well, Friday the thirteenth uh, can't go out, you know, because it's a bad day. But uh, this is it, superstition. I love that in Japan it's the number four. You know, like a much more difficult number to avoid. You know, it's like central to a lot of music and rhythmic structures. Oh my god! Number four. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, four is the unlucky. Lando, one, really Lando like Norris. I don't know if you watch Formula One. I love Formula One. What's his number? Question. He's number four, is he? Yes. Ricardo was three, and Norris is four. Okay. Yep. Yeah, who's got yeah. five now? Because like after Seb left, like five, someone else has got like someone coming in. Yeah, I think it's someone in F two's got a claim on five. I think, or is it one of the reserve drivers? I don't think it's currently active, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah after Seb, Seb left, Seb took that off Nigel Mansell. Yeah, and he took off Gilles Villeneuve, wasn't it? Who had it before? I think. Yeah, yeah. Did Gilles but, Villeneuve have the five? Yeah, but yeah, but you know, no, he had twenty seven, didn't he? So twenty seven was Gilles Villeneuve because that went on to like a Lacey. When it stayed with Ferrari. Anyway, there's a lot of people who don't know what we're talking about who probably think. Yeah, no, but did you watch? Did you watch the Japanese Grand Prix? Of course I did. Yes, great one. Of course it. I did. It was really good. I think um, there were some really great moments in it. Um, uh, I, I do still think that there are issues, but overall, it was it was a good race. Um, and oh. I really loved that outside round the outside move down in T1, T2. That was beautiful. Oh. What I, what I liked about it was where the two McLarens finished. 
Yeah, they're doing well. Like they went from like the back of the grid earlier this year, and like you could tell they had the car concept, but they hadn't perfected it, and they just worked out how to. They quick they they says give us it. give us time with working on it, you know. So we, then we know they're going to be bad, but but then I think it went better than what they all thought. But what do we think of our boy Yuki Sonoda? Our boy Yuki Sonoda, I I you know I think he's doing a damn good job, and I think he gets. A rough, he, he, yeah, he's a sweary boy for a Japanese lad, but, but he's doing a good job. He has been on lucky. He has been on lucky. Yeah. He has. He's done so good this year. He's done so good this year. So you know, yeah. But but he's um, he's you know he's he's one of them. But uh, but you know he's he'll do all right. But he's he's still in the team anyway, so that's good. Talking of shrinking, like he's he takes the Japanese like stereotype of height a bit too far. I don't know how tall he is, but he is tiny. I know. Like uh, you see, like when they do the post race interviews, everyone it's like the same background, and then when it gets to Yuki Sonoda, it's like, and here is the floor shot of that same well, scene. Well, <laughs> it's like he's well, so small. Well, we, we need him to stand next to Russell because Russell's tall. Yeah, Russell's a bit lanky, isn't he? I don't know how tall he is, but half of that's probably made up of his hair. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, I like say we're we're talking about Formula One and. Uh, they don't, yeah, we're finding a lot of shared interests. Watch, watch, yeah, watch Netflix Drive to Survive if you want to find out about Formula One. They are, I'll give them a <laughs> shout out. Doing some Netflix stuff now, keep people on YouTube, they need to watch more of our videos. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do think that, um, like YouTube's been like a really interesting place anyway because of the fact that it's, um, it's given me access to. Because you know, I've worked with music and everything before, and then since doing the whole YouTube thing, it is interesting how that was just something I did out of a bit of interest to take up what we were finished doing on the radio show I had before. And I'm just surprised how much that's become a thing. You know, Japanese music at the time, you know, it always used to be like short music videos, people weren't so much posting full length music videos, and more and more Japanese music's moved towards like embracing youtube not all of it you know some companies like the sony's and victors of this world have not but a lot of them have and um i think we're kind of in like a bit of a golden age of um japanese music online uh which i just hope continues to grow but yeah it's it's, it's really productive like a lot of things have been changing but i've like as a result things like netflix and stuff i used to have that and i just i haven't watched like TV or any like sort of broadcast stuff in so long now. I get like all my entertainment is from like a range of different like yeah online sources. You know, well, you find the stuff you like and you stick I with mean, it. I make a joke about I live on YouTube because yeah. I watch, I don't watch TV. I've got a TV, so I watch most of my stuff on YouTube. Mm. And you know, like new bands and things, I'm always looking, I'm mm. always looking for them. And that's, that's what I'm here for to support, up and coming bands, hopefully get them get them noticed and things like that. And then hopefully yeah. if, if they will, I'll do an interview with them. I've got a few um I've got a few I want to do interviews with, but because at the moment I've changed changed the way I work. I'll do like eight or ten uh, reactions in a day and I'll have four days off. Yeah, you know, that's the way it works. Makes sense. Is. Yeah. Because that makes sense. Then then I can start chasing up other things, you know, like like when I got on you, I, I, I said to you, I couldn't message you on first on um, Twitter. It wasn't there. Right. I couldn't do it. That's why. Oh, I asked, really? Yeah, that's why I asked the question. Then you, once you'd messaged me, it was there. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I know. Like the whole Twitter thing. When it, Sorry, the X. system's really cool. X. X. <laughs> let's all let's all be super edgy. X. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, I really is the fact it's gone it's like it's black with like a white X and everything is like oh, so edgy. But um, yeah, I, I I was kind of intrigued as well because again, I think I, I mean I had seen your stuff online. And I I kind of agree in a similar way. I live on YouTube, and it's amazing how YouTube is. It, it's this weird thing, and that like most social medias, it is a bit of an echo chamber, and that you have to be careful to diversify what you watch because otherwise you just end up getting really shoehorned into only watching one type of thing so you have to actively push the youtube algorithm to you know you know look at give you stuff that you wouldn't usually watch but oh, no. the um the the resulting thing is though is that if you really do want to get into something whether it be japanese music or not 
it's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, you start following like a couple of small bands. And as you know, suddenly you're getting recommendations for like a few other bands. You've got like a hundred subscribers you play and you're like, just really good. Um, and you just keep on, you know, you follow one new band, you start finding loads of new bands. So I agree with you. Like when people find new Japanese bands, I just kind of say to them, say, just look, subscribe, watch a couple of their videos and you'll be surprised. You'll start finding stuff that I'm yeah. not seeing. You know, YouTube will play more things. It, how, it's there. How a lot of them have been finding me, they, uh, they on Twitter, they start to follow me. So obviously I want to see if they are, right? Mm. And I think, oh, these are good. Well, one followed me. They've got no chance. They're a boy band. Sorry. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> um, yeah, you're just singing. You're not playing instruments. Yeah. So, so you know. So, well, but, that, that's actually an interesting question, if you don't mind me just sort of popping that one up for you. I mean, what is your feeling towards, like, um because Japan has like a big industry of artists who are maybe from that sort of pop band formula, and yet their music is not what we would normally associate with it. So you get like the the idol groups, maybe them less so, but you got like all title groups, you know, things like Bish, you know, a lot of people obviously will reference things like Babe Metal who have a backing band, but Babe Metal themselves are not a band. I mean, what is your feeling towards groups like that where the instrumentation is not, delivered by the right. band okay so okay I've, I have, I've said about this on my channel but idol bands right yeah um is it i oh, can't think of the name it's they've got a long name uh nicky nick well anyway they have a band behind them. maybe necronom idol i think, uh, no, I think no, that, talk... that's longer than that um wacker no wacker wacker back at mama whatever it oh is. wacker mama rock yeah that's it that's it you've got it yeah yeah <laughs> right, they've got a band behind them, yeah? Hmm. Then halfway through their set, they stand aside and give the band to play, yeah? Which I think is great. <clears throat> then you get the other ones that come along, turn up with a laptop and some weird guy with some weird thing on. That's karaoke. Where where would you draw the line, though? Because, I mean, you could argue, all right, let's, let's, say, all right, let's say I have a band. So, okay, let's say we have Wagram and Rock, yeah? And maybe they do a show where the band, you know, they, they only have a certain amount of time on stage. So they do the entire show themselves. The band don't get any songs themselves. The band just plays backing. I'm assuming we would still consider that to be okay. But then what happens if now Wagamami or Akia go to a show where maybe the stage is too small and they can't, they don't have room for it. They kind of got to play to a recorded backing. Uh, uh, where do we draw the line where we say that? Right, like no, no I, I mean, I, I suppose I should really correct myself on that because, if the music that you're listening to is if karaoke is when you're doing a cover, you're covering somebody else's song. Yeah, yeah. And then if you like, it doesn't matter. They turn up with a laptop, but it is original music on there, so you can't really call that karaoke, can you? Yeah, I, I, I think. I mean, for me, there's always been a sliding scale with this, where I can understand that some people are not so comfortable with artists who perform without live music on stage, and I do get that. But um, yeah, I, I would kind of go by the same thing, which is if the, if the song has been recorded um, as an original song, I'm willing to take that on credit. Because then again, you get a lot of bands who don't write their own songs, but people like them because they're musicians. Then you, again, you'll get um, bands who do write their own songs, but then they have like a pre-recorded backing. So it's very hard for me to draw that line. I think it, um, I think it's got to be a case of um, just you as a listener decide what works for you. But I think, you know, yeah, and then, and then you get bands, obviously, they write their own songs, they go play it, and then they got a semi-backing track for the instruments, which they can't play live. You know, yeah. Maybe they've got extra studio instruments on there. Um, so I think it's a very difficult one. Um, but, and I partly say this because I'm wearing the T-shirt. So um, yeah. I mean, I, but, I, I mean, some summertimes I say karaoke just for a bit of fun, but i got a really dry sense of humour, and people tend to take it the wrong way, so I don't care. You know, <laughs> insult yeah. me. I'm not I'm not bothered. But, but yeah, I mean, some of them, I mean, they they are... Well, we know they're singing live, unlike some mm. uh, bands and artists over this side of the world, which have been caught out, where we they're not singing syndrome. live. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, I, th yeah, I, I do have a line where they've got to at least. I mean, I don't mind pop groups. I'm, I'm all for that. I think it's its, it's own thing. But yeah, if you're not singing live, then you just become a dance group. And this was something I came up with. I had this. Uh, I did a whole video about this about the whole metal verse thing when metal verse was brought out and like there's five members on stage 
you're doing their new songs but only one of them is singing i'm like well then as far as i'm concerned this is a solo project so i i can't consider this to be a five-piece band if literally four of them don't even have mics they literally have and, and I, I put a whole poll on my question do you consider people can be members of a band if you if they don't actually contribute anything to the sound and i'm surprised how many people said yes um which really shocked me um uh, i was thinking that surely people were mostly going to say no and it would be more about um looking at the opposing view but the majority of people were like yeah you can have a member of a band who doesn't actually contribute anything to the sound which just really confused me because uh, i'm usually the well, yeah, I, I see. If someone's a dancer, you can be part of the group. You can be there. You can be like part of the whole thing. But I'm thinking, like, you've got a backing band on the stage. So this is what I said about Metalverse. So they were performing. They had like at least I think four musicians on stage, and then they had the five piece band at the front. So assuming there's four musicians, there's nine people on stage. One of them is singing the song, so she's a member. Then you've got four people who are playing music, which we're all listening and dancing to. They are not members. Then you have four people who are on stage who are dancing, but we cannot hear them. They are members. As I, well, then we're not talking about music. This is it's fine, but we have to be honest. This is a show. This is a dance show. This is a very different thing. Yeah. I don't know that I can say that is a band or that this is solely a musical thing when there are people who, if I listen to this, which is surely the point of music, I wouldn't even know they were there. So are they actually members of the band if I could listen to a recording of this, which again is the point of music, and I would not even know they were there, um, right. apart from the sound of their feet on the stage. Um, yeah, so th I, this was kind I, of a thing. I'll tell you something interesting now. Motley Crue. Okay. Have you heard? I, I've heard some Motley Crue. I'm not as well versed on them no, as I think a lot. But have you heard about them? Because they fell out with the guitarist, and then he he, he says to him, "No, they're not playing. It's it's all recorded." And then when you watch, then when you watch them, you'll see Nicky Six on the bass, and he's not playing it, but the bass is playing. Yeah, I mean, so to me, to me, that that's terrible if you're doing that. I mean, I would be like very much against that um, because my my whole feeling would, be, but you know, I mean, I. I and I think for people who know me know that I'm probably, and this might have come across with what I was just saying about pop bands as well. I'm very lenient on this thing to a certain degree, but I think there is this thing about, let's just be honest about what it is. So with Metalverse, like, I, I don't mind. If you want to have a group where half, you know, more than 80% of the members don't make a sound, I don't mind. Just call it what it is. Yeah. Um, let's be honest about it. Um, and, you know, and I'm, I'm fine with all these things, but there is that line where if you come onto stage and you bring instruments and you're not playing them, I think you need to kind of be honest and say, well, look, we're just kind of like doing a little homage. You know, we're kind of we're gonna dance around a little bit. Oh, it's us, you know, but yeah, kind of yeah, we we're over too old or too disinterested to actually fucking play our music. No, no. Just say it. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Bay City Rollers, right? When they went live, the, the real band was hidden behind the curtain. They weren't playing. Well, okay, so. This brings up an interesting point. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with um, it's, uh, it's quite a different genre of music, but if you're familiar with Gorillaz. So this was like Damon Albarn's thing that he did with some other people. And that to me is an example. Like for everyone knew the band was behind the curtain. They've actually, uh, uh, like the last 10 years or so, they now just play straight up. But they, everyone knew it was part of the show that the animation was animated over the top live and that the band were behind the curtain. Miku. Everyone knew. Miku, you know, it, it, but, uh, whatever her name is. The, the, the... Hatsune Miku. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, I think that's Go brilliant because, yeah. okay, she the, the band's live, right? The actual band's live. Yeah. Okay, she's obviously pre-recorded or whatever and done, but but the effect is brilliant. But you, yeah. but you know what you're getting. Right, yeah, but, it, but it's so good, and I, and I, and I, I haven't got a problem with that at all. You've got to respect I'm... the audience, though, because the audience are paying you money, yeah. and you, you've got to be able to at least justify that what you're giving them is what they expect. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think that that's that's for me. That's the big line, and um. 
but I am very open. Like, I mean, I've heard bands where like there'll be bands who will use things like auto tune live, and I say I don't think they need it, but hey, it's part of their song, whatever, fine. I've heard bands where they use excessive backing track. They're playing live, but they got supporting backing track. And I go, okay, well, at least we know what the deal is. You know, it's very clear they're playing with a backing track and they make it clear that there's no attempt to deceive the audience. But yeah, when it comes up to something like that, if it's just like, we're going to pretend and hope no one notices that we're not playing, then, it's, then I'm just like, now, now you just now you just don't give a shit about your audience. And that mm. for me is a problem. That for me is a problem because your audience are paying for your lifestyle they're paying for it and you know your audience to get the money to come to your show they have to go work and they work hard yeah and it's like if you're not willing to put in the same amount of effort to have this beautiful life um i I always think you know you should show respect to bands and to musicians and the hard work they put in but they have to put in the hard work because there's a fuck ton of other people who would rather be there than them if they're not willing to put in the work yeah because i react to an idol band couple of so days ago or three whatever it was and they just got the backing track if you like but they're all, they're all singing live there's no two ways about that the choreography they put into it and everything else so basically people are getting something for their money because yeah. you know they're dancing the little socks off and singing and you could you could see that you know you could tell those how oh, they can me dance around that without getting out of breath and keep singing i don't know but it was definitely it was definitely live, and I don't mind that because it's live. But it's when it's when you get someone just come on and the the singing, and uh, because I mean like like uh, Ariana Grande, there's a certain note in one of her songs she can't reach it. And of course, so it's all done through the uh, thing, and then it it does it for her. Yeah. And then what I, one sing, what one singer says, well, when you can't reach them notes anymore, when you get to it, just hold the mic to the audience. Yeah, I've heard about this like as as a thing. Apparently, this goes way back. Like with um with uh, I, I don't know how far, but apparently this is like a well known thing with singers that I only like heard about sort of like ten or fifteen years ago. Um, which is to be fair, I was yeah in my early twenties, but still, I remember when I first heard about this. And this whole idea that it's like some singers, they just look at certain one of their songs and they go, look, in an hour long set, I'm going to be too tired by the time I get to that. So that's the one where I'm going to get the audience to sing along. I've heard of this kind of thing. But um, this is instantly, I'm going to use this quick opportunity to plug. Um, so anyone who's been following my channel will know that um, actually when it comes to like those uh, like those uh, idol groups, girl groups, um, we, as my channel, we um, started supporting Dad Adams. I've got the T-shirt, I've got them like, up here, uh, because they were like a, a prime example, in my opinion. I saw them, like I, I was going to see another group, I saw them in a live house, and they just absolutely like blew me away. And actually, I saw, the first time I saw them was in the shelter, which for anyone who's seen Bocce the Rock, um, that's the real life starry venue. Um, anyway, I saw Send them, they the really link. blew me away. Yeah, I, I will actually. And um, I got in contact with them, and we became like, yeah, good friends got on with all of them and they it's interesting because they play at these little venues but they go on stage and when i first met them they were like so energetic that their singing was like a bit off when they were live because it was so hard for them to sing properly these big sort of like fun energetic rock songs whilst bouncing around the stage but now they've got so much better that even whilst dancing on this stage their singing is pinpoint and we've been sort of chronicling chronicling our activity with them, interviewing them regularly. I just did an interview with two new members who just joined. Do they, do they speak um, English? Unfortunately, I was going to say, if they spoke English, I would give them to you for an interview because that would be amazing. But um, I think one of the new members, Kimmy, she she's a bit... Well, I've got like a trans... Like you were earlier, she's a bit re- reserved about your English, but I think she's okay. I've, she's got she's... Trans- I've got a translator I can use. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. I think I think definitely. Um, I'll get them through to you because uh, they will be one of those groups who. Um, yeah, I think they'll be very. Uh, they're just a, like really good yeah. fun. For, for obviously, first I need to react to them and whatever. But yes, but, yeah. But this just is... make sure that you don't hate them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, they've they've been like um some of their music is really just catchy rock stuff, and we're trying to get them into the studio to uh get uh because they they they've made like a good little bit of money touring around the local scene and they got a small record company who we've spoken to and work with who basically sort of manage a lot of this and they make their money 
But like with so many of these groups, there's not really an impetus or maybe a knowledge of how to break out online. And that's what we've been kind of helping them with is like getting an online fan base. And I've been really impressed at how many people who don't usually listen to that type of music have been listening to them through our channel and just really enjoying them. Good. So um, I'll definitely give you some links as well. Oh, good. So, yeah, um, yeah. You, can check them out. you give me links to loads of bands. It doesn't matter. <laughs> because I mean, I mean, like the other day, if you're like pop music fan, who's whoever pop music fan is, comes on Twitter and just gives me a whole list. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and of course, they're all new bands. Normally, I got him once, him or her, whatever. I got them once. They go, I guess, no, actually, I've already reacted to that one. <laughs> yeah. Right before you sent it. <laughs> So do, do you ever get that thing, though, where you've done so many bands that someone will give you something, you listen to it, and you'll be like, oh, and you'll be talking about it, and then they'll say, yeah, you've heard that that band before. And you're like, I, I really didn't know. No, I've done worse than that. Oh, God. I, I, reacted, to, I reacted to this band, and somebody says to me, do you realise you reacted to them three weeks ago? Was it the same song, though? At least yes, you can cover yes, yourself. yes. Same oh, song. No. No, <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's what happens when you get old, isn't it? Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's where you can use the name to your advantage. Oh, I am old. So, so I went, I went back to see what I said about it, compared my notes. Well, no, that's when you should be really worried. Is when you go back and it turns out that you said totally different shit the second time around. Like, ah, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't. though, that was the thing. It wasn't. But, but why I couldn't remember them, I don't know. But it, it's. It's been see because of me. It's like okay, I'll do like let's say eight to ten reactions. I put them up right, and then somebody comments on something. I think, well, I can't remember. Come that was days ago when I did that. <laughs> you know, it, it is it's difficult, and I, I think one of the things which is interesting as well is that a lot of fans online. Obviously, I mean, one of the things I love is that a lot of them are very passionate about the groups they like, even if it's like yeah, a tiny yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. But that can have a bit of a kickback when you review the band, you give them a lot of attention in the video, but then you don't review them for even just like a month, you know, just a short period of time. And then they come up again and you don't remember the names, you don't remember any of that stuff. And the person, I think sometimes people feel really almost a little bit offended, like, oh, but I thought you were into this. And you're like, yeah, but I have to like listen to and talk to a lot of bands. It doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just that there's only a certain amount of information I can retain. And when they're all bands, it's like, that means I know like 50,000 bassists. It's like, so the stories start to become intermingled. And you remember something about one person who was actually another person. And it's difficult because you're trying. Yeah. The answer to that is, I mean, when you're a kid, your brain's like a sponge. Yeah. Everything Mm. goes in. When you get my age, you become a brick. I, I still think this is where the adjective in your um in your name old. I think you can use that to your advantage. I think you're probably more cognitively aware of things. I mean, than you're you're using that. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up. I go, oops, that's a senior moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, I did find I found I found a load of um, outtakes, if you like, of things that's gone wrong. Right? Oh, nice. And I thought, I can't put that up. Why, well, blimey, look at the, the air's gone blue. I'm calling myself all sorts here. Yeah. So so I thought, well, I can't put that up. But these were all earlier on. And I mean, like one, I, if you like, I started to uh, started to do it. And I realised I haven't got them up. They're not there. Oh, right. So you mean you, you had videos, but you haven't actually uploaded Yeah, because when I'm watching them, I've got the whole screen covered. I can't see what faces are making or anything like that. Oh, so you can't, you, oh, so you can't actually see yourself when you're recording. No, I'll do it on purpose. Okay. Yeah. Because you see, if I see myself, then you'd be deliberately trying to look, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? So it's just a genuine. I, 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 I've never, I've never so much had that. I, I can always see myself when I record because I think in a way, I think this goes back to the studio thing that, Oh, so you're used to working in the studio thing before where, you know, your headphone or one on, one off, you know, that kind of whole thing where you kind of need to monitor yourself to check you're doing it right. And when I initially started doing this, I had a camera that I couldn't see myself on. And when I watched it back, I'd often like drift into parts of the frame I didn't want to be in. So I started like thinking, well, I need to monitor myself to stay in the right part of the frame. So I actually do look at myself when I do it, but it doesn't stop me from occasionally cringing and going, oh. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> so, well, what I do, see, like, like now, obviously, I can see myself in the camera, and everything. So, from from that first picture you see of me, yes, I can see myself. 
Then yeah. when I when I put the video up and click on it, that then goes full screen, so it goes over the top, so yeah. I can't see myself. But in this particular mean, yeah. case, I hadn't put it in, and then I realised as I was going through, and I stopped oh. it, and I thought, "You stupid old." Well, I won't say what I said, but <laughs> then then there was one I put up. I actually put up, and someone says, "Great music. Where's the video?" Then another one I put. It was just your face for like five minutes. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, someone. Someone says to me, "Yeah, they, they clicked on it." Says, "Well, what it says and what we get is completely different." Uh, so like no, I, put I put the wrong thumb. I put the wrong on the wrong thing. You see, you know, uh, messed it yeah. up. And so, and I'm thinking. Uh, since then, I've got more organised. These days, when I when I do. When I, when I do um, my reactions, what I do, because obviously I, I, I'm going to name them now, so I click through, put the name on, and then just, just give it a quick run to see if I've got the right one every time, yeah. just in case, yeah. because I'm so good at messing up. It's, it's, it's the easiest thing in the world to get things wrong. I think when you naturally assume that your default state of being is making a mess of things yeah when you naturally like you, know, you made a few mistakes and you go well look, this is just something that i do i make mistakes you become very uh good at putting in the guardrails against your own mistakes you know you start to become very good at doing things that mean that you're not you know avoid i mean i i uploaded the video to um the second channel i do with uh, neon reaper and uh, reactor matt benedict uh, we got a channel called ears to the east and i do all the editing for that but it's all done for a template and I made an error. I think it's the first error I've actually made on that channel with a video I uploaded, which I went live, I think either yesterday or today it went live. And I, I clicked it just to see how it was doing. And I realized that it's so many people have made this error. You've probably seen this on a bunch of channels. You get to the end, the screen goes blank, and then the video just continues for two minutes as a blank screen. You're like, ah, I didn't set the ending correctly. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's kind of amazing how easy it is to... Uh, like make those little mistakes and things. Uh, even when you're so used to putting in all the templates and things that help avoid that. But it's part of the charm. And this goes back to what we were saying before. And that one of the similarities that we have is that we're both kind of like lighthearted and self-critical when we make mistakes. So if I do something silly, I'll reference it on the screen. I'll put something up in the corner. Oh, yeah, I do to that, like yeah. show that I did a like a, a stupid thing. And you were saying, yeah, you do the same thing. Um and like, so when I was doing these interviews, like the interview I did with Tone Spoon, there was like kind of all kinds of technical problems suddenly happened because I'm in Nagoya and it's just me. So usually I come with like someone else who helps me do my stuff. Um, but it was like just me and a five piece band, which is the biggest band I've ever had to record on my own since doing this channel. And with my sort of very basic uh, equipment that I have to bring with me in a bag to Nagoya. And the technical side of it just started getting really out of hand. So when I'm editing that video, I've got all kinds of stuff coming up on the screen, just sort of showing the list of things that are going wrong as they go wrong, because it's part of the charm. You know, it's the, if you're again, like we were saying with the whole bands, if you're real with people, I think we're in that age now since like broadcast TV is less of a thing now. And now Internet uh, entertainment and like independently made entertainment is more of a thing. I think people more and more and more now just want honesty. It's like if you're honest yeah. and you're real with people, that that means more than all the production value in the world. Well, yeah. And so for me, that's that's the message, really. Whatever yeah. art you're creating, yeah. just be honest about it. But, but that's it. Why has everything got to be so so perfectly put together? That doesn't. That to me is not very human. I mean, I watch a lot of these other channels. You know, the amount of editing where this, the body suddenly moving because it oh, another edit, another edit, another edit. I mean, oh, you know, that fast cut thing that's so popular. I don't like that. Yeah, I like mean, they say I, half a sentence and then cut. It, it just, just be yourself. That's all. I, that's all. I, I've always said that. Just be yourself, and and that's what I and that's what I am. And you know, to to do all the editing, flipping it. I, I just I can't see the point in it. It's it's not right. It's just not right. It's just. Can I just right. say though, so, I I live stream. To... Right, you get a live stream, but people don't edit on a live stream, do they? It's live. No, exactly. It's That's very rather honest. popular. But by the way, I think you need to adjust your lampshade back there. You know, yeah, 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 in your giant apartment. <laughs> 
<laughs> but actually, no, I mean, I just because uh, obviously the this is what I mean though, is it in a way like the with the green screen thing and with me having this background, it's it's kind of okay to you know, obviously you want to put some effort into it, but there's like effort going into just making it kind of nice. And then there's also when people were like when people are try harding too much and like say that fast cut thing people do where they say one sentence and then they continue and they're talking about this but is it like this and is it like that and yeah. you know it, it's it just becomes one of those things where it's like yeah i it doesn't feel real it it, it doesn't feel on oh my god you're in space <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like old oh, Mr. Bezos. Oh no, I didn't say that. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> but it's a sudden shot of you in space. I really like that picture. I think, I, yeah, I, I like that. I think, oh, in a way, it suits you. The world. I'm actually you're, blending you're, in with it. You are as well. You're, you're yeah, wearing, and it, and it brings out all the wrinkles. <laughs> I like the fact that the sun is behind you and that the light is on your face, which kind of more opens uh, certain uh, astronomical questions about where well, you are in the universe. You see, if I do what you're doing, if, look, see, now you can see them in me in my glasses. There we go. Yeah, so I've got my uh, my little ring light showing up here. Um, in fact, I used to have like a couple of ring lights, but ever since I actually managed to finally, after months of living in this apartment, finally get a proper ceiling light installed, that happened like... I think it was yesterday I finally got that installed. And now there's actually light in my room. It's um again more of these wonderful YouTuber struggles. The struggle Yeah, is you see, but you got you got the ring light in one eye. Yeah. Um so I used to have like one here and then one on the other side as well. As, as you then, see, I've got I've got two up there. Well, my other one currently isn't switched on, this one. This is the one that's usually up here. Um All right. so anyone is seen my live stream would have seen that before but since i got the ceiling light working um i don't need that <laughs> so i've just got the one ring light there there, are, there are, look i've gone a bit darker now there we go oh we get mood lighting now oh, okay yeah. it's more dramatic i feel yeah, like oh, you're no, gonna do no, like no, the no. opening oh, speech oh, from no. war of the worlds or something now oh we've gone a bit blue hey hold up you got the same thing yes <laughs> yeah little disco light effects going on there yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, if you like, that's more of an orangey sort of look. <laughs> and of course, then we can put the other one back on. I was say, if you can get a nice green, we can see you as like the alien invader. Old Mister B has come to take over Earth. Yeah, I'll put them both on that. So it's just, you know, but I've never, I've never even really bothered about getting a perfect picture of myself, sort of thing. You know, no. Nah. I um, mean, the camera, this camera I've got, will actually follow me around the room. Oh, you got one of those ones. Yes, yes, I've, I've seen those. Oh, yes, I did a live stream of that flipping thing. It got stuck, didn't it? I went down, it followed me, it won't come back up. With so, so uh, you know, but but it is, it, it is a it is a good camera and it's so small, it's only tiny mm. and it just sits on there. But I've, I have to remember because if, if I move my chair, it makes me do weird things in my chair with four. Oh, yeah, oh, really? I'm not moving very far so. I have to remember it, it's hand gestures and that I hadn't turned it off one day. It's like whoop, and this was this was on an interview, and I thought, oh dear, quick stop. Um, so you know these these things happen, and I get fed up again flipping uh, flipping text messages now. But uh, this is what happens. <laughs> you switched off the following thing, but you didn't switch off your phone. This is like a... <laughs> no. I'm surprised you're getting signal in space. So you've yeah, got no. a pretty good provider. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to, um, I'm, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it now, what I'm using. Because, again, it's the name, I can't remember. <laughs> the name. Whoever they are, they've got coverage in space, and I regard that as pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> space, the final frontier, to go where no man has gone before. Captain Slark, Stardate, whatever. <laughs> I was about to say, you're going to pay some serious roaming charges for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why they can they can try phone it. trek phone trek yeah f yeah f yeah start a new series phone trek <laughs> yeah oh, then, then all of a sudden you know do, 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 phone comes fly much <laughs> hey no cover huh have you no got a cover? oh yeah no well I've got like this little plastic thing that came on it but, oh right um, yeah it's like, it's um it's, 
<laughs> it's um too many yeah. cameras on mine. Whoa, okay. Are they how many of those are fake and how many of those are real? Four are real. One's a one's a flashlight. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Um yeah, I think my 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 I had the joy of two cameras and uh yeah, a little torch on the side of there as well. Oh I mean it's uh, all right for recording, but but you know when you turn the camera around, that's when I get a shock and I see myself. Oh yeah. You've got a real aversion to seeing yourself. And I, in all fairness, I, I, I have an aversion to seeing too much of myself as well. I don't like to watch my own videos back a lot of the time. But um, in the same token, uh, I think it's a it's a uh, occupational hazard that you often have to see your own face when you're editing things for YouTube. Well, a friend of mine said, he says, uh, you know, I'll show him stuff. He says, why do you keep skipping your bits at the start? He says, well, obvious reasons. <laughs> but, yeah. Getting to the good bit, yeah. <laughs> I says to him, I says to him, you know, if you feel tired in the morning, I've only got to look in the mirror. That wakes me up. Oh. <laughs> this is that kind of self-deprecating, you know, like English humor. But I don't know if other countries have this. I noticed that, like, um, in Japan, the sense of humor here sometimes is very similar. Sometimes it's very different. Like, uh, so the the Japanese they they very much enjoy dry humor, but I don't think they enjoy dry sarcasm. Yeah. So. I noticed that um like dry sarcasm, I think leaving because dry sarcasm, you you're leaving the possibility that something negative is being said and it's open for the person to interpret it, which I think in Japan is like a little bit too maybe too much of a social faux pas, a little bit too socially awkward. Um, but just dry humor where everyone knows it's dry humor, that that's very popular here. Um right, well, I got is... dry dry sense of humor, but yeah. But it's like me, I got a problem with my legs and my feet are swelling up. Big time, yeah. And uh, so I ended up going to doctors and ended up going to, to the hospital and, and then they ended up where I wear these elasticated socks, right? But, right? but anyway, I had another thought. I thought, well, look at the size of my ears and my big nose. I'm turning into an elephant. <laughs> I thought you meant the elasticated socks were just pushing it all up into your head. <laughs> it's expanding out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or you can do <laughs> it's working it's just, it's so you can glide down from height all I need to, all I need to show I look like a tortoise <laughs> like somewhere between tortoise and an elephant <laughs> you're just asking for memes at this point <laughs> yeah no I don't this is the thing is obviously I don't I don't I don't care you know this is one of the things mm. I'm not bothered about what you know, people can say anything I like about me. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't really. Well, care. this is why I don't shave because if I shave, I end up looking like a potato, and then you know, it's like um, that's my my biggest risk is that I end up. Well, I didn't like have a... to. My party and just went yee <laughs> There's there's a there's a there's a lot of hair hidden under there. Somewhere. I'm going to find some of my old pictures if I can. When when I, if you know Mark Boland in T Rex, what well, his hair was. Yeah. My hair was like that. I'm, I'm visualizing it now. I wish we had a filter for that as well. You in space with long hair, like long flowing hair. That's what I want to imagine right now. Well, I um, can't find me wig. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, a, I've got a wig, because uh, <laughs> this is the it may be one, com right? it may be coming out again when it hit twenty five thousand subscribers. Oh, how are you on at the moment? You're at twenty four something. You're twenty four thousand, right? Okay. Yeah, but but I should have said that, should have, because they'll keep me to it now. Okay, oh, we have to just, just put your band made thing on again. Yeah, you know, made out. I I I'm gonna remember that, and I'm gonna keep you to it. <laughs> so yeah, I make a new intro with me wearing the made outfit. Just, just the just one you off. flying it from the corner, just in your made outfit flying. You got to do the that's, whole thing. It's the no whole good. thing. My skirt will be blowing up. <laughs> You get demonetized for that pretty quick. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> oh man, yeah. I um, I, I remember when uh, I, it was actually a fairly modest um number. I think it might have been like eight hundred subs or something on this channel because we we had the previous channel out shut down. We restarted, and so I think when we got up, so it was eight hundred subs. I agreed to do the dance from uh, the end of the uh, Afterlife video by Bandmate where, you know, the, the maids are all in the back and they do that little dance to the song. I agreed to basically do that. And I went on live stream 
And um, I just I did the uh, the dance to that, and that was like my little contribution. And then people started saying, "Yeah, but how would you got to do it in a maid's outfit?" And I said, "No, no, <laughs> that's that's no one wants to see that. You don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. No one wants to see that." So and I never actually did the outfit, but I did do the dance. So you know, maybe someone can like impose us both together, and between the two of us, we'll end up making one convincing maid. Oh man, I don't mind. I'll put it on again because I'll green screen myself and come up with something. You know. I I really want to see what you get for this. I really want to see. We've got to put some extra effort into this one. It's going to be. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to work on it. I think I'll best start working on it soon, and see what <laughs> I can come up with. Um, because I don't take myself seriously. Say, no. I, like I say, I'm not a musician. Don't call myself a musician. I just mess about playing the guitar. And make. I can do an intro. After that, I was like, oh, but somebody says to me, "Well, get 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 a load of intros and join them up." You got you got to tune in, haven't you? Well, that's, that's how a lot of um. I, I don't want to sound like I'm ragging on a genre here, but that's how, like there's a lot of. I think this is more a Western metal thing. There's a lot of Western metal bands where it just sounds like they were like, "Here's a cool intro riff. Here's a cool intro riff. Here's a cool intro riff." Wait a minute, if we make that verse, chorus, bridge, it's like they just basically slap three riffs together and they got a song. Um, there are some bands like that. Um, but I, I think I think I fit in a similar boat to you in that I play music, but I. I both feel awkward, well, not awkward, but I feel a bit weird if someone asks me if I'm a musician, because if I say I am a musician, they expect a level of proficiency, which I don't have. But if I say I'm not a musician, then it sounds like I don't know how to play an instrument. Um, but because like music writing was more where I'd worked with this, um, I kind of had to learn music, and I enjoyed playing music, obviously, but um, I had to learn uh, instruments. So I learned quite a few instruments. You know, I can play the drums. I can do a good range of rhythms and feels on drums. You know, I can play bass, guitar. I've got them here. You know, piano I'm fine with. I've got a Japanese koto. I can play that. If someone asked me, oh, how would you want to come and do a live show playing the koto? I'd be like, ah, give me a couple of months to, like, really practice. And then even then, I'm not sure I would. Um, it's one of those things where it's and i think a lot of the time we get a lot of maybe there's a lot of people now who really wear it as a label oh i'm a musician and uh, i don't know i just like to say i play music so, you know i play music i like to play music I, you know, I have been in bands and stuff but now i, I just play music oh, and yeah. you decide whether you like my music or I, not but i play a guitar in a fashion that's the way i'll put it but but also i don't know how you pronounce it shameson is it or, or Shamasen, the three string. Band. Oh, Shamasen, sorry. Shamasen. <laughs> yeah. It sounds so Irish. I'm playing the Shamasen. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. The intro I was working on has got one M on. I don't own one. Um, you can actually, you can get like, uh, so the normal Shamasen's the one which you play with like the paddle. Um, <laughs> I remember my uh, oh, father on. when he first saw on. one of those, he called it like a, he called it an ice right. scraper. I don't own one, but I've got one on this intro and i'm playing it is it through in a pedal or is it through a keyboard well this is what happens when you've got a um a helix oh you know helix line six helix oh okay lines yeah i know line six yeah but yeah but not just that i've got the uh variax guitar that goes with it which then you can collect connect it up with an internet lead so the Helix, is, a, is it a pedal or is it like an effects thing or is it a, an effects pedal or, you know? Well, pick it up, it's about this big. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a full-on unit of its own. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah. It's well, they're very well known. Now I've got one and I've got the, the Variax guitar, which plugs into it, if you like, mm -hmm. via the internet lead. Yeah. You get all sorts of sound of it. But also, I've got another guitar. I've got a, um, I think it's called GR55, Boss GR55 or Roland, whatever. And you get an extra pickup, and it turns your guitar into a uh, synthesizer. And yeah. guess what sounds are on there? Jameson. Yep. <laughs> so, I remember, like, the um, default, like, 127 MIDI back in the day, like, the 127 MIDI pack that all uh, systems had included. There's a Koto and a Shamazin were always included in those. So um, it seems to be, like, an effect. That even though most people don't know what a Shamazin is, it always seems to be a, a sound that you can get hold of. I would, I would love to play one of them, but uh, well, I was going to say that the the Okinawa one that you just play with your hand, you can often because they're very simple to make. You can often buy them online for pretty cheap. Yeah, but they've got no frets on. Where am I going to put my fingers? You, know, you have to guess them, won't you? Oh, yeah. 
learning to play shamisen was the first fretless instrument i ever played and it really just helped me play guitar a lot like um it 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 does wonders for your ability to sort of become very like just sort of learn the feel of an instrument where to find the notes yeah i've got the i've got the ice scraper so i'm all right for playing it yes (laughs) So you've got to have the ice scraper if you want to play the old style one. I love it because my 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 dad is definitely like he he's um uh, yeah, he's, a, he's an older fella, but um uh, unlike yourself, he's more yeah he he's very much like he doesn't really have a very international view of things to put it politely. Um and so like every time like anything Japanese that I was doing that he got any wind of, he would always have some sort of weird simplified reference but i loved when he called the shams and he said oh you play it with an ice scraper so that's, actually that's quite funny <laughs> yeah that's, that's that's exactly what it looks like well, um I, I do love it when they introduce traditional instruments in with more like wagaki band i was gonna say wagaki band yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean I, I just like it i just like what they've done with it it it's just so good to see and then you've got that uh gur, 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 whatever it's called that long thing with strings on that the chinese play well, the one you because you you were about to give it, I believe, the Korean name. The I think it is weird. So it begins with a G. Um, uh, but in so that is what in Japan is a koto, and then in China it's got another name. It might also begin with a G. I don't know. No. But, so that's one of those instruments that's gone through all three countries. But yeah. so basically, the general term is they refer to it as a zither. I think it's a type but, of zither uh, or a harp. <laughs> if you want to be real simple, the way they play them things. It's unreal because, you know, the, the tape, the tape, all the plectrums to the fingers. Well, they're not plectrums, but, you know. You, you, um, so with my one, it's just like a little ring. You pop it on and sits on your finger. In fact, actually, the Okinawa shamisen, you can use a similar thing. Um, but, yeah, it's just like a little thing you put on your fingers and you put it on your thumb. And then um, the weird thing is I think the koto is a perfect example of an instrument which is kind of similar to the bass in this aspect and that anyone can play it and yet mastering it is difficult so anyone can get a few notes out of it and basically play a simple tune that's really not difficult but mastering it like with the bass guitar it's one of those instruments where it goes from like a huge range of things that you can do with it yeah. um oh bending the strings you know, you know. Yeah, man. and the speed to play out anyway i've reacted to uh, somebody playing that as you, as you see, because I'm so sick, I can't remember names of things, you know. Instruments, you'd think I'd remember the instrument, would you? Because I've got guitars and stuff, you know. You're going you're gonna to put me in a bad name now, now because like, I'm like notorious. Like Everyone knows that I always forget the names of stuff, like names of people in band and stuff, and I'm going to get called out for the oh, fact no, that I'm, I'm, I'm like no. nowhere near an age and I haven't got the excuse. It, it's like, I, I, I forget, it takes me ages to, to register with, uh, with, with names in bands, you know. Now, oh, like, if there like was no all numbers, yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. Oh, I see 657 is really good on the guitar. Look at 02 on the drums. Well, we just get them all orange jumpsuits and print numbers on them. And you know, it's like, it's like a prison colony of band members. <laughs> Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Slipknot's one of those bands who they seem to be beloved by everyone. And I remember like, with um with bandmade like I, I've obviously we, we've done loads of things on bandmade and the big part of like the stuff we did on my channel for a long time and every time they come up with something new I listen to it and they did a cover of a Slipknot song backstage once and I remember listening to it and yeah I have no disrespect or anything everyone loves what they love and music subjective but them playing a cover of uh, a Slipknot song I remember actually saying that's literally the most boring thing I've ever heard bandmade play so that's the most boring sound that's ever come up bandmade. I, it's like, I can't imagine them doing something that dull on their own. Um, so let's listen to it. Like, it's so weird hearing that. But um, well, this is one of the questions that I wanted to ask. Can, you, can I, I just like yeah, to say, I have, I have seen Slipknot live. Yeah, everyone seems to love them. I, well, you know, I'm, I'm no, in a minority I've, on this one. I've seen a lot of, a lot, a lot of bands live. You know, even the most hated band in the world I've seen live. Oasis? <laughs> no. Oh, Nickelback! Yes. There we go. <laughs> and they, they well, I wanted to laugh at them, it didn't bother them. No. Because now now, now somebody else is picking on somebody else and Nickelback got to see them and he and they said to them, he says, ha, come on, join us in our hole. <laughs> well, 
I think the thing about like a band like Nickelback, though, is they have this quality where they know that if they were just like, if people just didn't like them, their career would have been over. The fact that they're so notably hated is actually what's given their career so much longevity because even the people who don't like them talk about them because they use them as this yeah. sort of like example of, oh, so people going, oh, that's like so bad that could be Nickelback. By doing that, you're advertising them and keeping them around. Now, I mean, for myself, I I've said this before, like Nickelback, I, I don't quintessentially hate them like because the first couple of albums in fact i think the first three albums they had some really good songs in them mm. and there was just this point at some point where they became awful but the thing, funny thing is that point was after everyone had already said they were awful um they actually continued to be pretty good i think they had that album called the long road which had like photograph on and that was not a bad album it was pretty yeah you know, i mean it wasn't revolutionary but it was pretty decent had some good tracks on there and then at some point they just started doing what was it? I was trying to remember the other day. I think it was called Road to Revolution or something, which is quite possibly one of the most cringe inducing songs I've ever heard in my life. It's just like, uh, here's right. a generic yeah. song. Of, here's a generic song where we're like angry about something, but we can't really define it. So here's some generic stock phrases about revolution. And we're going to pretend we're really behind whatever your cause is. We don't know what it uh, is. Well, I did, hey. I did the reaction to them. San Quentin. All right. San Quentin. The song. San Quentin. I don't know that one. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, obviously, me, uh, my uh, thumbnail was San Quentin, and you got them outside it and stuff, and you know, did all sorts. Yeah, have to do it, but but yeah, no, I just did it. I just did it. I thought, well, why not? You know, let's see, let's see <laughs> if it gets blocked. That was it. That was the <laughs> that was the thing, and it didn't get blocked. But yeah, I think they're wise enough to know that. You know, or at least their company is, but I assume them as well. They're wise enough to know that having their name constantly in everyone's mouths is is basically that's their pension. That's going to keep them alive. That's going to pay for their retirement. That's going to be them set forever. So, you know, why ever, why take their name out of anyone's mouth? Because the funny thing is, is if someone says, oh, Nickelback are playing near, there'll be people who go along just out of curiosity because they've heard people ragging on Nickelback. Um, yeah. It's it's a very good strategy, and I think a lot of the time, a lot of bands don't understand how important that is. But I think one of the things I wanted to bring up here, just to, uh, I know you've talked about this on your channel. Yeah, make it quick because I think I think we'll stop recording. I think we've been going. <laughs> oh really? How long have we got? How long have we got? I think we've been on long enough for now. We can always do right, a, okay. we can always do a part two. I'll do a final question then before we move on to part two. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Um, because you cover a lot of music, both from Japan and overseas as well. And I've had this topic so many times, especially since living in Japan, about the difference between Western music and Japanese music. Now, you've said, like, you discussed this before we went uh, on to recording, that you said that, like, finding Japanese music was like, um, in a way, it was like getting back into music again, you know, sort of yeah. rediscovering a lot of love of that. But I know you also cover a lot of um, Western bands as well. And I was just wondering like what your feeling is here about with Japanese music encouraging Western music or is the Western music also improving? I mean, how do you feel like the general state of things is right now? Well, apparently the state of things in the UK and America, everybody says the same thing. It, the rock music, it's, it's died a death. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and of course, Japanese bands and things are, are bringing it back, back to life. I mean, it's like me, I reacted to a band. I didn't realize where they're from. So now I'm, Check in. I didn't realize they were from the UK. Shock, horror, surprise. I thought, oh, they're from the UK. Right. Okay. Um, because it's a surprise because I don't know what's happening over here. I've done interviews yeah. with bands over here, but they're all, they're all, you know, just up and coming bands. Mother, mm -hmm. Because you can't get near the big ones because you'd get blocked. Yeah. You know, things like that. But there is some good stuff in this country. There is some good ones. But few and far between. Whereas in, in like Japan, if you like, they're everywhere. Yeah. You know, they mix genres together. You know, rock, pop, music. You know, and it's like, hey, that's great how they mix it. Because yeah. the thing about like putting loads of intros together, you've got to get it to flow through. Exactly. And uh, that's the thing. And they seem to achieve all that. But I mean, it's 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 not very good here because I mean a lot a lot of them is just churning out stuff that sounds like it's still in the 80s yeah they they feel almost like when they ran out of ideas about 20 years ago it became the thing is oh let's regress and i remember even like the white stripes now a lot of people speak positively for them i don't know much of their music but i think it was around about that time it felt like everyone suddenly regressed to the 70s 
like the new ideas ran out, they regressed to the 70s and they've been walking back forwards from there. But for me, one of the things I've often noticed, and I'll reference more the heavy bands, because I know this is an area where you and maybe a lot of the audience probably have uh, more knowledge. But for me, one of the things I've really noticed about heavy bands in the West compared to Japan, and I almost consider this like a, it's not the rule, but it's a thing that I listen for because it's almost like a demonstration of what's good and what's bad is in the West, you'll have a lot of bands where the bassist and the guitarist are playing the same thing. Yeah, the guitarist might be doing chords, but the bassist and guitarist are playing the same thing. And to me, that's like a, that's like a, I have issues with your band then, because it's like, how is the bassist literally coming into the studio and they haven't thought of anything to add except for maybe an octave here or there? It's like, you are literally content to come in and play the same thing as the guitarist and then that's, leave. That's the great thing about the Japanese, the, the runs they're putting on the bass. And, and I've even Effort. said some of the songs are bass led. You can yeah. tell it's bass led, and that's a lot. That's that's the fascinating thing about them. this. Was said about learning, or you know, if you like, all over again with it all because it's it's so much. You know, you listen and you, and you can hear they got great tone on the bass. And a lot of the UK bands, you can never hear the bass. No, you know, who's that? Who's well, that if you nice? can't hear what it, what it just doing? it just melds into the guitar and you're like oh is it just like a guitar with a really deep long bottom string or something you know yeah it's not so it's not there's all that but there is there is some good bands i mean like yeah i, I like i like vintage they're from america i've done an interview with them they're good and um so yeah you know, there's yeah there's there's some there's some good ones but but i keep looking i keep looking i mean and with this country i'm not having much luck um and um but there, and if they're there, I will, I will react to them and um, to support them. But I'm looking for the smaller, the smaller bands, not the huge bands. And I think in Japan yeah. you've got loads on every level. I'm, yeah. I mean, so this, I think this is the point: is that for me at least, like you look to the West, and I'm open. If someone gives me a good Western band, I, there are some good Western bands out there, and I'll listen to them and enjoy them. Um, but ultimately. Why even, I know it sounds so cynical, but why even look there when if I just keep my eyes on Japan at any level of fame, at any time, there is just a cornucopia of really interesting bands. It's like you click on it and it's more of a chance you're going to get something good than not. Yeah, but there's also Indonesia, Philippines. True. Oh, uh, Philippines got some awesome music, yeah. Yeah, and, and Korea. Korea's like got some great stuff. It's a little bit hidden because of the prevalence of K-pop, but I mean, there is some good stuff in there. And Taiwan as well. I mean, credit to yeah, Taiwan. Taiwan Taiwan's yeah. got some great bands. Um, yeah. I've reacted so, to yeah. all these all these countries. And uh, I mean, it's like Rum Kicks. They're from uh, Korea, yeah. Korea and hated. Hated in Korea. But when they came really? over to the... Yeah, oh yeah. Well, I think there's an issue with punk in Korea. I think like yeah. in Korea well, because of the... Instance when when they past. came over here the other year, for the first time went to the Rebellion Festival in Blackpool, hmm. they went down a storm. They yeah. were that shocked. They're in tears at the end with happiness, you know. Yeah. They couldn't believe it. So obviously they come back again, and this time they're on an even bigger stage. Everybody wanted them back. And and they really took off. 18 Fevers came over for the first time this year. And when they, when they played the Rebellion Festival, this is all, it's all our dreams have come true. Yeah. Well, it's it's a weird comparison, isn't it? Because they come from Korea where there's a stigma against punk and rock as a general is hidden under um, the K-pop thing. They go to Britain where obviously there's a lot of people starving for interesting music and there's a big crowd. But then they come to Japan and it's probably there's almost like there's too much competition. You've now gone into an area where there's so much homegrown stuff. It can be hard for overseas bands to really break in in uh, japan but, but they yeah. will still find venues they'll still find stages they'll that's still find right but the thing is they come to the uk and i said to them it's the home of punk rock yeah and they yeah. and they did a cover of england belongs to me and and I, 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 after they've been here i said to them it belongs to you now don't it <laughs> yeah yeah it does it does yeah. um but anyway and, yeah i yeah, think we should we should uh, we should round this one off yeah yeah so <laughs> i'm just gonna say i'm gonna need know, another coffee piss in a yeah, minute cheerio so, to everybody Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, see you next time. Um, do check out, uh, I'm just going to uh, add a quick thing. Uh, back a broadcast, if you want to see, um, the channel's been a bit quiet while I've been doing new things. We're going to have a lot of exclusive with small bands, a lot of the videos coming out. 
ears to the east if you just want to see some more conversation with me and my co-hosts and if you want to see an interesting uh japanese small group who are basically they're a pop group but they're doing really cool rock songs check out dad adams um there's links to them on my videos about them on my channel as well if you want easy links through and also i'll have all the links in the description below anyway i love this man and i'll put a bit on the end <laughs> where i go through all that <laughs> <laughs> so I just I, I apologies I just cut in on no, that. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. So anyway, <laughs> I would say cheerio to everybody. All right, cheerio, one. Right. Well, there you go. I thought I could talk. I think I make me match now, haven't I? <laughs> Both rabbiting on. We actually uh, started talking as as you, as you saw there. It was like two hours had passed before we did the record before we recorded it. In total, we were talking for six hours. Um, yeah, so, uh, but well, I've got all the things planned as well. And, uh, but um, it's all good fun. That's all it's about. I mean, you know, you can watch, you can watch it and just, you know, no matter how long it goes on for. I'm not going to edit it. I've not edited it or anything. I've just put it up as it is. Anyway, there you go, folks. Enough for me. I just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, so so much for all your comments and support and everything else. And by the way, all the information um, to his channel will be there. Uh, all the links and stuff will be um, in the description, what you normally do. So uh, you know, go and check him out, check his channel out if you want to. Anyway, like I say, thank you, everybody. You're all awesome for your comments, your support, and everything else. And of course, please stay safe. This old fella will be back. Bye for now.